Join me as today I finish off issue number five of Eagle Moss Hero Collectors Ecto-1. Hey everybody, Jason here of GhostbustersNews.com and as always Ghostbusters News right here on YouTube. And yes, today, back again as we finish issue number five of Eagle Moss Hero Collectors Ecto-1 build series, the massive 1-8 scale Ecto-1. And as always, if you watch today's video and you like what you see and you want to start building your very own Ecto-1, we've got links right down below in the description. Click them and start your subscription today. You'll be building, I'll be building, we'll be building together. We can talk about it in the comment section where we're going to have a great, great time. And speaking of a great, great time, let's go ahead, let's crack issue number five open, let's move the camera around, and let's start building uh, this Ecto-1 today. Alright guys, so today we're going to be continuing our build of issue number five here of Eagle Moss Hero Collectors uh, Ecto-1, build an Ecto-1 series. Now last time we finished stage 11 and 12, this time we're going to be focusing in on stage 13 and 14, which let's uh, go ahead and turn it. Oh. Jumped a little too far there. Let's go to 13, there we go. So for the first part here, we're going to be building the front chassis frame and the distributor. So let's go ahead and bring in stage 13. And holy crap, I feel like John Candy in The Great Outdoors, like when they bring him the stake out in front of him, uh, because this is a massive, massive, massive piece here. Um, all right, so give me a second. Uh, let's unbag this and let's start building today. All right, so I think we got pretty much everything on uh, unbagged here. We got some screws right here, little tiny little pieces for the build as well. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Wow, okay, so we got the main chassis here, which is all metal. And I gotta say, it, it's got a lot of weight to it here. Uh, so we got that piece, and then from there we got like this little, little small area here. Uh, and that's it. So I think stage 13, at least judging by the instructions here, it's gonna be pretty fast, it's gonna be pretty easy. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first step, uh, which is gonna be uh, attaching the cover. Lie the front of the chassis frame on your building surface, which I guess is right here. Um, and then place the front chassis frame cover uh, in the concave section. Secure the parts together using the two EM screws, which I've got four right here. Uh, all right, so let's find out where we, where we attach in this here. Looks like right there. That's, uh, that's easy enough there, and we're gonna be driving those two screws uh, right here and there. So let's go ahead and unbag those EM screws. All right, so we got both screws in there. That is looking secure. Man, still still can't get over the uh, the overall size of that. That's, that's huge. Uh, from there, what do we got? We got this like little small part it came with, and we're gonna be attaching that. What do we got here? Number two, fixing the distributor. So yes, the distributor, that's what this is. Uh, place the distributor on the front chassis frame so that the screw holes on the two pieces are aligned. Use an EM screw to fix the parts together, which once again, they gave me, uh, what do we got here? Two more EM screws. So in case I screw up, I got an extra EM screw. All right, so let's grab this here, and it looks like, what do we got, right there? Yeah, right here is where the distributor is gonna go. So let's go ahead and grab one of those EM screws right now. All right, and there we go. We got that one nice in there. Looking secure, looking really good. Uh, now I do wanna give everybody a quick heads up. The target right now is to try and get two of these videos cranked out uh, pretty much on a weekly basis. So hopefully, I mean, that's the goal right now that every single week we're gonna have at least two build videos of the Eagle Moss Hero Collector Ecto-1. Maybe more, you know, maybe if I if I can't stop building because I'm having so much darn fun with this thing, uh, you may see three videos a week, maybe four, who knows? But right now the, the target is definitely two videos per week. Now when it comes to stage three, uh, that's, it. Holy crap, that is the easiest stage I think we've done yet, except for like, you know, stage one and stage two. Uh, so let's go ahead and turn to page 16 here, which is stage 14, uh, the left front suspension and the brake drum. And looking at the build pieces here, it looks like, yeah, so this is definitely gonna be, uh, you know, a bit more in depth than what we got with the, the chassis. So let's go ahead and unbag this here. Give me one quick second, guys. All right, so that's good there. Let's move that aside. So our first step is gonna be assembling the lower suspension arm, which uh, looks like it's this piece right here. Yeah, so we've got that. So lo locate the lower uh, steering knuckle connector. Okay, I'm gonna need one of those. So let's grab that and we're gonna be attaching that via some EM screws, it looks like. EM screws, EM screws. Where art thou? Oh, there they are, EM screws. And before I attach the screws, I'm glad I double checked because I grabbed this piece originally for this, uh, yeah, I, I grabbed the wrong piece. This is actually what I need. It's a little, little different, as you can see, obviously. This has a hole, this, this does not. Apparently, I'm blind today. 
All right, and I've got the two EM screws in there. I'm not too sure if it's supposed to be, you know, that loose there. But uh, moving on, it looks like, what do we got here? 14H, push the rubber bumper, which, where's the rubber bumper? This is the rubber bumper, I believe. That looks like the rubber bumper, yes. Push the rubber bumper into the place on the lower suspension arm, securing from beneath using one of the GP screws. So it looks like it'll be going through this area right here. Now we just gotta find the GP screws right quick. Uh, they only sent two of those there. So let's go ahead and tear into this bag. All right, so we got the rubber bumper now on there. You can kind of see it kind of poking up there. Uh, after that, we're gonna be moving on to the construction of the upper suspension arm. So what do we got here? This looks like the piece that we're gonna need there. So let's lay that out like so. And it says to slot the upper steering knuckle connector into the narrow end of the upper suspension arm. So that was the piece that I actually grabbed earlier by mistake. So we're gonna pop that right in there. And once again, we're gonna be, uh, it looks like connecting this using some EM screws. Alright, so we got that one in there and alright, looking secure, much like that. From there, figure A, it looks like, what do we got? Keep it like this. We're going to be attaching 14C, which looks to be uh, the shaft. Slot the shaft, 14C, into the wider end of the upper suspension arm as shown in figure B. Figure B? No? Okay, wait, figure A, figure A. That's, that's an error. That should be figure B. Come on, Eagle Moss, don't confuse me here. All right, so we gotta attach this piece here, which let's find it. Yeah, it looks like it's this little guy. So let's bring this in. How does it go like that? Yeah, looks like that. And once again, we'll be attaching that using two EM screws. So let's bring those in and uh, let's screw it up. All right, so we are now done that step. Let's move on to, uh, what do you hear? Part three, fitting the arms to the frame. Uh, okay, actually, oh, we get to bring in the big frame. I'm excited, okay, so I guess this is, yeah, left front suspension, so this is what's gonna be like, pretty much affixing the front left tire, let me grab it here, the front left tire that we've already built for the Ecto-1, so, oh, it's starting to come together, I'm, I'm getting really excited here. So let's see what we need to do here, so figure A, what part is this? This part is what I'm looking for here, so we're gonna be attaching uh, this here to the frame. Let me actually move this around right quick. It looks like that. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I'm assuming, yeah, this goes right into there. Nice. And judging from figure B here, we've got to now move it around here, turn it upside down, uh, because we're going to secure that into place, looks like with some HM screws. All right, so I just got the second screw going in here now. A couple more turns. That should be good. All right, so there it is. So that's connected there. Going from there, it looks like we're gonna go to figure C, which, oh, actually we're gonna keep it this way it looks like. And we're gonna now attach that other piece we've been building uh, in stage 14. So it looks like for this one, we're going to kind of rest it here, maybe? Is that is that what we're going with it? All right, so it looks like that's in place now. And then from there, what do we got? We're gonna be using uh, 14i, I believe that is. So the two mounting brackets. Let's go ahead and grab those. And the mounting brackets are just gonna go over that uh, previously built piece there, the, uh, the lower suspension arm. So how do we do this? We just pop that right on there. We got the other one, and then we're going to secure both of those in place with some, what do we got here, IM screws. So let's grab those. All right, so I got the first two screws in there, one for here, one for there. Just want to see, yep, all right, so that functions. Let's go ahead and put the, uh, the next two screws in. All right, so that is in there, nice and secure. We're good there, so we are now finished with page 17. Let's move on to page 18, where we're gonna be assembling the brake drum. So it looks like we need uh, really all these pieces in here. Well, obviously we're gonna need all these pieces, so let's grab the first few that it looks like it's showing here in uh, step number four. So push the center of the steering knuckle, 14J, which Steering knuckle, steering knuckle, it's this piece right here. So we're gonna be attaching that through the middle of the backing plate, which is 14K. And this looks like the piece that's right in my hand right now. So 
how do we do this here? We gotta make it look just, just like that. So, I think it's like this? Looks like that? Um, ah, I see. So there's like little holes back here. There's a couple little holes here on the, uh, the backing plate and all we gotta do is just line those up and we're gonna secure those with some EM screws. All right, so that's looking, yeah, like that. So figure B here, we're gonna be taking piece, what do we got here? Well, this piece right here, uh, and we're gonna be placing the brake drum on top of the brake backing plate. Uh, on the side, you have just driven the screws through. So that's where these screws are going through, and yeah, we're going to be fixing that all together. And it's like we're gonna be doing that with some HP screws, which I got right here. So let's go ahead and pop those also out of the bag. All right, so I got the first HP screw going in there. And I just wanna say, guys, I wanna thank everybody out there. Recently here on the Ghostbusters News Channel, we've been covering the, the new Hasbro Spengler's Neutrona One, and the response to those videos have been absolutely phenomenal. And also at the same time, the amount of new people watching Ghostbusters News, so I'm getting nervous, I'm, I'm dropping everything. Uh, the amount of people, like new people, that are checking out Ghostbusters News and just discovering the channel and the website, um, it's been nothing short than amazing. So if you are new to the Ghostbusters News channel, I thank you, I welcome you, and I'm, I'm pretty excited for what we have coming up for you guys here over the next couple months. Uh, if you don't know, we do have the Halloween countdown that's gonna be starting up in a couple weeks here on the Ghostbusters News channel, which pretty much means like weekly videos of like reviews and unboxings, and also just weird, wacky content all around. So yeah, really, really excited for that. Um, okay, so part four, it looks like we're, well, not done yet. We, we're done with figure B. Uh, don't get overzealous, I usually do. So uh, let's move on here. We're gonna be actually attaching this now to the uh, the main frame here, to the chassis. And to do that, oh, okay, I get it. It's, so it's going to, it's gonna attach into both of these. <gasps> Is this the brake drop? I get it now, this is where the tire's gonna go. Oh, I'm, I'm starting to understand cars and vehicles. I feel like such a man for once in my life. Now to attach those, I'm gonna need myself a JM screw here. So let's go ahead and pop this open. All right, JM screws over there. And I think, how's this gonna attach in there? All right, so I got that all nice and tight there. And oh. Wait a minute, I, I'm really starting to get this. It's really starting to come together and I'm really starting to get excited here. All right, so moving on to part five here, fitting the shock absorber. Uh, it looks like our first step in figure A is actually gonna be taking this piece and uh, moving it up. So there we go there. Uh, lift up the legs, the lower suspension, uh, arm fitted in step three, which yeah, we just did, uh, to reveal the circular opening in the chassis frame. Place the coil spring, which I have got right here to the right. Let me grab it. There we go, coil spring. So yeah, place the coil spring into this place. So there we go, figure B, done. Then push the suspension arm back into place. You will feel resistance from the spring as you do so. So that, that obviously makes sense. So let's go ahead and put this into place, make sure everything lines up. I do feel resistance. All right, so now it's telling me to take this and move and kind of turn the whole chassis over and figure C, we're gonna be attaching everything in place using an IM screw. And this, we're definitely gonna have to push down because once again, we do have, we have a spring in between here. So uh, yeah, this is gonna have to be really nice and tight to hold everything in place. All right, and we got that in place there and holy, that does feel a lot tighter now. Uh, not nearly as loose. Uh, once again, we've got the spring in there, so there's some absorption there. Uh, moving on to figure D, we're gonna be taking piece 14B, which is the, what do we got here, shock absorber? Yeah, take the shock absorber, uh, and we're going to insert it into the hole on this side, it looks like. So this is the shock absorber here. Let's see how we're gonna pop this in. There's like a little indentation here to tell us which way it goes, and that's, that's it? No, that's not it. Figure E, we're gonna be putting an HM screw on the other side, and I'm assuming that is what's going to, yes, that's what's gonna hold the shock absorber in place. All right, so shock absorber is now in place there, and I gotta say, I'm so far pretty proud of this. I know I'm just following instructions, but I'm, I'm proud with what I've created so far. I'm, I'm pretty giddy. I mean, I'm like a kid on Christmas morning, 
finally seeing this, you know, start to come together, even though this is like really the basics. Once again, this is just the chassis, but the fact that there's something here that's starting to look like a vehicle, a car, <sighs> the Ecto-1, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty ecstatic right now. So now that we got that done, let's go ahead and move on to part six, assembling the steering rack, uh, which it looks like we just really have two more pieces left. So we've got to be getting to the end of today's build. Uh, so what do we got to do here? What do we got to do? So begin lining up the left tie rod alongside the steering rack, securing together with one HM screw. So, so make sure I got this right here. Is this looking right? Is that looking right? That's looking right. Okay, so that's how I should have that. And then we're gonna bring in this, and this should affix right there. So let me find that uh, that EM screw. Sorry, that HM screw, I should say. All right, so that is in there. Cool, cool, cool. So figure B, what do we got here for figure B? Take this and push the pin at the end of the tie rod through the round slot in the steering knuckle. Okay, so let's angle that up here. And I think, oh, I think I see exactly what I'm supposed to do here. There's like a little hole here on that side. Got some, looks like it can fill it there. It'll pop right in. And yeah, I think that's it. From there, let's turn it around and we're gonna be connecting it uh, all together using a KM screw, it shows. All right, and there we go, it's in there, nice and tight. If there's one thing we do here on the Ghostbusters News Channel, we keep it nice, we keep it nice and tight. So that's in there. Um, all right, there's not too much we can do over here just yet, but uh, yeah, that's looking really cool. As you can see, it, it moves it. Oh boy, oh boy, so, so excited. Um, so that finishes off issue number five, I do believe. We're on page 19 right now. Turning it around here, we've got, uh, what do we got here? A segment interview here with Joe Medjuk there. Um, yeah, that's gonna be it for this issue. Close it up. Now for the next installment, guys, uh, we got something pretty special planned here, and that is this right here. For those that don't know, uh, you can actually build the Proton Packs and have them rest in the back of the Eagle Moss Hero Collector Ecto-1. Actually, I should correct myself, four Proton Packs, one Ghost Trap here. Um, so in our next build video, we're going to, uh, well, not be building the Ecto-1, we're gonna be building some of the equipment that's gonna be housed inside the Ecto-1. Once again, four Proton Packs, the Ghost Trap, I can't hardly wait, guys. Uh, ever since I've got this, like I've been waiting to kind of get to this step, and I, I think we're far along now with the Ecto-1 build where we can kind of do a bit of a diversion here, and once again, uh, kind of build the Proton Packs and the Ghost Traps, so be sure to check us out for our next Eagle Moss Hero Collector Ecto-1 build right here on the Ghostbusters News YouTube channel. And of course, ghostbustersnews.com. Seriously, I can't get enough of this. I made a thing, it, it, it moves it. Uh, I'm gonna jump the gun a little bit and uh, a piece of that, you know, tire, pretty much the whole tire, nearly the whole tire that we've already built. Oh, let's uh, let's put that on there and let's, oh, it's, it's moving the tire. If you couldn't tell little things, they, they excite me. And you know what else excites me? The next video we're gonna be doing here where we're gonna be building those proton packs and the ghost trap that's gonna go inside this Ecto-1 when it's finished. So if you'd like to stick around and check out that video, be sure to subscribe to Ghostbusters News right here on YouTube. Stay up to date with all the Ghostbusters happenings. And as always, if you'd like to help out Ghostbusters News, we do have the official Ghostbusters News Patreon page. Link to that can be found right down below in the description. Signing up to that gets you exclusive content, gets you early content, and also you can enter uh, exclusive giveaways as well. Oh, and best yet, it also helps out Ghostbusters News in general. So I thank you for doing that. If you do that, if not, hey, I still thank you for checking out today's video. As always guys, I'll see everybody right back here next time on Ghostbusters News.